Kappa. Mm. I feel like we did have a lot of Kazuyas. When there was still a lot to be discovered and a lot to be learned, I feel like they were really prolific and everywhere. But the consistent thing I've heard from people who play Kazuya but don't play him anymore is like, where Smash is very... <laughs> Where, where Smash is a very unique game in that every single match feels different, Kazuya makes it a bit more linear. So whereas he's a very strong character, it can make going through a bracket run quite a similar time to itself, which makes people not want to play it as much. But, anyway, enough enough about a character that isn't on the screen. We have a different Electric Wind God Fist here, and <laughs> this, one, uh, this one is a little bit smaller than the last. Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, the Rod himself, Pikachu, again, one of those underrepresented characters that we were just speaking about against Blunt Forever, a Diddy, who's actually been going, you know, quite hard into this bracket. He's been doing really well. And it looks like, um, it looks like we've started off on Smashville quite a, a kind of an explosive start, to be honest. I was expecting more of a, um, a more of a laid back approach when it comes to, for Diddy, but it looks like he's been going straight ahead and just taking out these stocks oh my god that fair was amazing and just managed to delete those barrels those barrels went flying that they did off to the stars above uh and here goes neros getting all the way in finding a bit more damage on blunt forever and it's just starting to rise i feel like what diddy excels at right is being small hard to hit and having a really good combo game and I feel like what Pikachu excels at is being small, hard to hit, and having a good combo game. So basically, both these players have got very similar kind of things that they're going to be fishing for. But they also have very similar advantages and disadvantages, which means that they can work their way out of whatever the opponent tosses at them. Which makes this a very interesting game. Not about winning neutral, but about winning it more times. Yeah, no, I can definitely agree there. Especially Neroz's approach, I feel like, is going to be, you know, I want to kind of avoid banana because the more that I play neutral, the more that I'm technically at the disadvantage due to the fact mm. that, you know, banana inherently will always give you an advantage because, you know, it is an item. It is something that just basically trips you and wins you neutral for free. It wins those kind of ledge traps. So he's wanting to get those hits and take them as far as he can. And thankfully, he's doing really well for himself. He gets that down smash. Not going to kill. Um, unfortunately for Nero's, but Blunt, hope, uh, Blunt Forever can hopefully take that for him. Uh, that stop for himself. Gets that trip, but doesn't get much off of it. And then we get the monkey flip, and now we're two stocks to two. That we are. It's looking a little bit more even. Obviously, Blunt Forever is on that back foot, as Nero's does have to just land one more solid hit. But that's 20% a hit from Blunt Forever. Taking Nero's up to 40, while Nero's takes Blunt uh, all the way back to zero, in fact. Taking that stock and pushing this to a bit of a choke point for Blunt Forever. They either have to go all in and get more damage or be a bit more reserved. It looks like they're going for the all in approach, trying to secure this kill on Nero's before Nero's can get too much purchase back. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. We can definitely see the kind of uh, percent build up and again, the the laid back approach that we were talking about has kind of gone out the window for Blunt Forever. He wants to take this stock and he wants to take it now, as you had just mentioned. Ooh, a little bit of damage there on himself uh, from the self-inflicted barrels, which is a shame, but I feel like he was trying to go for an early kill because those barrels, once it hits that ground, that stock is going bye-bye pretty much at like, any kind of kill percent. So we're seeing a kind of ledge trap opportunity. He does the Z-drop on the uh, on the banana there and does get a back air. But you know what? Neros is fighting his way back. I do love these aggressive... Okay, uh, reversals and the kind of counterplay that he's doing right now it looking really good for him he goes for that ledge shrimp down there very nice execution from doesn't hit the mark he already knew that the ledge shrimp was coming hits the barrels and game one goes to nero's very nice catching the recovery there and he's just going to go with a commanding two stock i will say it did say 158 percent alex but that was you know he was holding that advantage and he was not letting go yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I I have like the the stream we're watching on one monitor, and then I've got the the Twitch live stream on the other monitor. So I've got almost like a delay that if I miss something, I can look it back. Right, mm -hmm. that kill. I still can't work out who went up and who went down because we, <laughs> we 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 had Diddy Kong charging barrels. P Pikachu who hit him out of the barrels. They blew up, and then they both just fall away from each other. Uh, frankly. I, I, I know that it was Diddy Kong that hit the bomb blast zone because, you know, it there was the explosion from there. But it was so hectic, so chaotic, and so explosive, I feel like that one interaction sums up what this match is all about. Yeah, absolutely. A very kind of... Um 
a matchup that's kind of <laughs> dealt with calamity in, in some ways. A lot of moving parts that could go wrong at any point, and as we saw for Blunt Forever, that one moving part, which was the barrels, just kind of taken from underneath them. Any kind of hitbox will will say bye bye to his recovery. And fortunately for Pikachu, fortunately for Neros, that kind of uh, that kind of hitbox can be done in the form of projectiles as well. And that Thunder Jewel, as we all know, is quite a deadly projectile indeed. And honestly, looking back at it, um, the kind of aggression that um, Bloomfrev was showing in those kind of in those kind of last stages of the match was going pretty well until he overextended. So, what do you think could um, possibly be done differently in order to secure a game? It's kind of hard to say because we're seeing we're seeing Blood Forever play play as Diddy Kong a lot, right? And that hear me out because that sounds like it's a well, yeah, no way. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely are. But what it feels like is they're playing around their they're playing as their character rather than around their opponents. And obviously, Neros is like really good, so it's going to be really hard to find that counterplay easily. But they're they're relying on Banana a lot, which Neros is actually grabbing and reversing back into their own state. And Neros is actually playing defensive with T-Jots and shields, letting Blunt Forever approach. Always, by the way, with the hitting aggressive version of Monkey Flip, and then punishing them for the approaches that they're attempting. I want to see Blunt Forever clocking on to what what options it is that Neros is tossing out and how they're approaching every situation, and start to adapt your approach to counterplay into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. I was like you were saying, the kind of approaches that Neros is doing, he hasn't clocked onto yet. Especially, it kind of felt a bit safe um, in regards to the the kind of approaches. But he he was uh, he was pushing forward with that nair, gets that drag down nair, down smash, takes that stock. So again, with with the kind of approaches that we've seen, very aggressive. Maybe Blood Forever can do something, possibly with with the. Um, banana, as we as we said previously, that is just the neutral tool that holds it all down for Diddy. But at the moment, it's not looking like that's coming to fruition. That down air is going to take that. Is he able to make it back? He does. Never mind that down air was able to put a put a stop to the original recovery plan. But he makes it back and gets a monkey flip of his own to take that stock. But okay, we're seeing the kind. Sorry. Real quick, the aggressive it. monkey flip was gross, right? Like, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out and say it. it they tossed that banana so that Neroz couldn't really get back to stage at all. Then went for the aggressive monkey flip, which beat out T Jolt, and a a chimpanzee's foot completely beat a pool of raw electricity. Just putting it that way. Um, and I, I wouldn't have expected that to work, but it did. Blonde Forever takes the stock because of it and is now actually putting in quite a good bit of work, but does get caught with that engage from the air by a Nero's up smash. Nero, it feels like every single time Blonde Forever gets a little bit of purchase on this mountain that they need to climb, Nero's is right there to knock them back down. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're seeing a kind of, again, a kind of different approach, more more towards the ledge trapping. And again, it's, it's very very methodical and i'm really liking this the slow pace of of what we're doing uh, for 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 Blunt forever you know okay i'm gonna throw i'm gonna throw this down i'm gonna put down a hitbox in case they want to uh, approach aggressively and it's just working out really well for him right now yeah it definitely is i really like the way that Blunt forever is chasing up on Nero's. like they're finding these stray hits and they actually aren't afraid to take them a little bit further like they, they'll catch you with a random little bit of an aerial and instantly know where you're going to be try and follow up with an up air they don't always connect but they aren't often getting punished for it which is totally fine to do if Nero's like lives this by the way at 161 Nero's just like they are playing an excellent game of dodgeball finally they get grabbed they get thrown and Blunt Forever does push this to a last stock scenario. The percents are a little bit bleak. They're in Nero's favor, but I don't think this is an impossible mountain to climb. Yeah, it's looking, again, I did like the, the kind of adaptation that you'd laid out previously. It was working wonders for him, and now he just needs to kind of continue it. That trade was so good for Blunt Forever, otherwise he was going to lose that stock. Again, we're seeing a very kind of, oh, now going back to the aggressive approach. And once again, prior to what you were saying, it was getting punished. That it was. There's a plan forever. Resetting to the middle of the stage. They're playing really patient, really far away. Because what Pikachu has in incredible combo game, they lack in terms of chase and range. And it oh wait, Blunt Forever lived on from that. Wow, does make it back. Is 134. And Nero just isn't finding a kill shot from center stage. They're working really hard on keeping Blunt Forever in disadvantage. But this reversal could be huge. That down air as well, looking to seal this out as quick as possible. Blunt Forever knows that their life has a timer on it, and they're making the most of every second. There's the Pikachu headbutt, and there is the kill. Nero's taking it away 2-0. There is still at least one more game in the tank. 
Yeah, I'm loving the fact that he knew that the banana was the, the key piece to that. He knew he was going to go for it and was like, you know what? I've got this best option. I've got this co-option. I'm taking this away from you. And it's 2-0, two, oh, two Nero's right now. And again, I feel like what you were saying, Dalex, was perfect for the kind of adaptation that he needs to make. He needs to take it to a kind of slower style. He needs to stop throwing out. Even though the monkey flip did take the stocks, like you said, going through the, uh, the thunder jolt, it did not work out in the end in he almost cost him the stock in the like with the the back air punishing the aggressive like restart of the neutral and it looks like if he continues to go that way it looks like Neos is gonna storm ahead with this yeah that it is and we're going rocketing straight into game three a direct run back as well and here we go. It's already in advance from Nero's. Nero's is so good. I've said it before. I know, but I'm happy to say it again. Nero's is so good at finding a single hit, connecting it, and then running away with it. Opening up through just pure muscle memory and knowledge of their character to get good, consistent damage. Yeah, I'm loving the fact that like Nero's knows he just doesn't need to um, take all of these fights. Otherwise, he's going to get a lot of percent rolled up onto, uh, onto his stock. And he's just sitting by, you know, just being able to take center stage. And if he's ledge trapping, he's just waiting to see what can be thrown out by Blunt forever. I'm loving the kind of patience that's been seen. And it's the kind of, it's the kind of things that you what? want to see here at Tech Republic. I cannot believe that hit, Alex. That forward smash was huge. I, I want to know, that was a conversion from weak hit up smash, I think? They, they whiffed a proper hit of an up smash and then turned around and air smashed. What a good read on Blunt Forever's option after falling out of a hit that shouldn't have really gone that way. And Blunt Forever drops another stock to a really unfortunate SD, trying to tech off the side of the stage from what should have been the last hit of a Pikachu backer. But Smash being Smash, the multi-hit doesn't work and Blunt Forever drops a stock because of it. This is such a bleak situation. I saw them lean back. They looked like it's got it's rattled them in the mind a little bit. And in a situation like that, you can't afford to let it affect you too bad. Otherwise, this last stock, you're already playing on a back foot. Don't make it worse. 100% agree. And again, that kind of aggression that you had mentioned before, it's only getting worse to deal with. And Nero's is just sitting there in his comfort zone. We see a back out to send off. He goes to the other side of the stage. We see a dash attack possibly take the stock. No, it doesn't lead to anything, unfortunately. He's off stage now, but Nero's gets back with safety. That command grab is going to send him off stage again but not much is coming from it looks like he's struggling too much here now it's, I, is there anything they could possibly do to try and take this to a, to a game three possibly uh, to a game it's hard to, it's kind of hard to say it feels like blunt forever is just trying to find these hits and i have noticed a little something something that i will mention after this is done really good way out of that what an amazing combo with that banana hold on blunt forever's down but they are still putting on a good show Tossing that banana, recatch, throw it down, combo into an F smash. They know their character. They're saying, don't look away, but maybe you should have done if you were a Blob Forever fan. That up smash connects, and Neros takes it 3 